Hey you guys, are you ready for the Dork Forest? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Jackie Cation! <laughs> See if this works. How about the, the soundtrack, the music, the theme? I have three beverages. I have two. I love beverages. I am the winner of beverages. You want to just take the mic out, or you want to... <gasps> it's very soft in the background. Welcome to the dark forest. Jackie and her pals will never bore us. Shameless confessions about our obsessions will make us laugh and smile. So let's explore the dark forest and dork down for a Done, Curious Theater, Portland, Oregon. All Jane and no dick. All Jane and no dick. All, oh, she rode a bicycle. Anyway, uh, hey, welcome to the live the Dork Forest here in Portland, Oregon at the Curious Theater at the All Jane No Dick Comedy Festival uh, with ladies. You can applaud again, mustachioed man. Do it. Let's do this. It's an exciting one. Uh, we got Casey up here doing the doing the audio this time uh, live. Let's have an applause for him. I'm not above it. And then Casey, he's up there. He's he's shrouded in darkness. And then, uh, because it's a nice room, it's a beautiful room. And uh, Mike Rickberg's just sang that song you heard, and his girlfriend Sarah. They're still not married. Anyway, and then uh, Michael sing again at the end when you download it from iTunes or go to thedorkforest.com. So those are the things that are happening. And everybody who came to the live show today, if you're sewing people, and we're in Portland, uh, I think you are. Uh, there's you can there's use patches super glue as well. It's, <laughs> they're patches. They're like Boy Scout, Girl Scout patches, and the gays can have them too. It's nice. It's got the new design and stuff. There's CDs and T-shirts over there if you want to buy them after. And then Curious Theater has T-shirts as well, which is super fun because uh, they're a nonprofit. I don't know if you guys know that. Did you guys hear? Did you guys hear? Did you hear? All right, nice. All right, and then you can have magnets too later uh, for coming to the show. Uh, you know the websites. You know the the credits. Patrick Brady is going to fix the audio. Mike Rickberg just sang. Vilmos does the website. Let's introduce your local dork luminary. And when I say you are a dork luminary, you are a dork luminary. She said, I think I'm just a dork. Yeah. No, no, no. Ladies and gentlemen, Chelsea Kane. Let's get into it. Thank, you. Thank yeah. you very much. Here's what everybody else may not know. Besides ChelseaKane.com, uh, thrillers, crime, right? Fictional crime novels, amazing, tension-filled fictional crime novels that I will only read in the light. And because uh, that's what I like. I like uh, I like to read during the daytime if it's scary. But there's 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 five of them out already, and they've They're, all been New York Times bestsellers. It's true. Yes. Yeah. And how many languages? Thirty-five. Hello, Inuit, Cherokee. No. Okay. Now I feel bad about myself. <laughs> now you feel bad. No, no. It's going to be great. It's coming, a friend. All right. Mine. All right. So uh, we have that. I have, Norwe- I have a Norwegian audio tape. Oh, nor- really? In like a Norwegian yeah. audible? The, the, yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Like and read they, aloud yes. by some Norwegian dude. Yes. They sent me like thirty copies in a box, and I was like, I listened to the first like half a chapter, and was like, that was awesome. And now, what do I do with the thirty co- copies of the Norwegian audiobook? So, if send anybody to, speaks mm-hmm, Norwegian, let mm-hmm. me know. Send I'll them to Minnesota. That's it. I said Northern Wisconsin. I'll them. That's it. Those people would love it. Your people, my people. That's right. I'm from Wisconsin. Her husband from Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Very exciting. So uh, the newest one out is called Kill You Twice, and it just came out in August. So th- that means that the next one's due this next August. It's coming out, yes, in August. Okay, right. Every oh, August. From that's now right. Every, on, forever. Forever. Yeah. Until she buys land. And uh, <laughs> it's awesome. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then it's going to be an FX series. That's right, right? Yes. What's it going to be called? Do you know? The working title is Heartsick, which is the title of the first book. Heartsick. So we'll see. Heartsick. Sick. Beautiful. It's you know, I, in fact, I discovered this, and it's just like a tip for people out there struggling to write thriller series that become bestsellers. <laughs> yes. Um, hint, hint. Don't put heart in the title of your book if you want uh-huh. men to buy it at the airport. Oh, note to self. Yes. Ladies, if I y'all didn't know. no dick. I, because how heart you know? sick, like mm-hmm. clever, I thought, because there's this whole, can I swear? On yeah, the, fucking oh, A. Oh, great. Yeah. So there's this whole fuck 
fucked up twisted relationship between a cop and a serial killer in this series. And so heart sick, like seemed apropos. And yeah. then like they did this cover and they had to do a hundred covers at my publishing house because they discovered that if it, they did like a picture of a woman, uh, it looked uh. like, like a, a book about female depression. Yeah. Oh. And, and, and really like, every, or otherwise it, like it looked like a book about a bad divorce. And no one, oh, yeah, it's yeah. not a thriller. So they you ended up, after a hundred covers, literally a hundred covers, they ended up doing like this red texture. Like it was a total like surrender. <laughs> it was awesome. Like it was tactile. People like sure, that. Sure. Who doesn't like a fuzzy book? Right? Yeah. I like a Bumpy. fuzzy book. Was yeah. it fuzzy? No. It oh, just bumpy. tactile. Just had some texture yes, to it. a okay. little texture. Okay. It's like farina. Like polenta. Okay. Yes. Like polenta. <laughs> and... Uh, that first book, it was tough to get men to buy because it was red also, oh. and it said heart on it, they and they like would be brown? at the airport. Right. They do. Ben like brown, brown. or navy. There's a picture of a couch. Khaki. <laughs> yeah. Or a cooch. Right. Huh? A cooch. cooch. From Portland, huh? Oregon. Well done. Portland, Oregon. Right. Right. I don't Kudos. come often, but every time I come, I am, I am openly mocked when yeah. I say, uh, turn right on Couch Street. No. No, I won't say my friends who right. live here. I'll turn right on Couch Street or Cooch Street. It's Cooch. Cooch. I fucked it up. Anyway, Cooch. so um, we'll yeah, edit that but out. But that's interesting. Fine. You know, uh, Ross Thomas wrote a series of uh, thrillers in the 60s and 70s mm -hmm. uh, that were sort of journalistic thrillers, uh, Washington-based, whatever. And somebody told him that you could never sell a book with the word Chinaman in the cover. <laughs> So no, he, tell me more about that. <laughs> no, really? The mystery of the word Negro. And no, no, it was like, it was the word, so he, he purposefully wrote a book with the word Chinaman and Dwarf. And because they had also told him See, that but he that makes it be, better. It somehow cancels out Chinaman. No, no, it, one really? was Chinaman and the other one oh, was Dwarf. No, he, it, I think he was a bit of a tool bag of uh -huh. a human being. He yeah. might actually be an asshole. Uh, he's dead now. So I, he's when you say journalistic dead. thriller, what does that mean? He was a journalist. He lived in Washington, kind of a Cold War spy. But, but everyone, he made it's all made up. Oh yeah, it's okay. all made up. It's so journalistic if you ever read a Ross is, Thomas, which, oh, journalistic makes it sound like it might be based on fact. It does to me. Sure, that's because you're an author. I'm just a comic. Oh. It's, yeah, yeah. Because you know things. I mean, it's like because the, the one book I did get to read of Chelsea Kate, and I have. Did, did you guys ever read her her column in the Oregon Herald? No, no. See, the Oregon Herald is the fictional. That's the fictional version. Thing. That's right. Of the Oregon it wasn't the Mercury. The it was the real. What's the, I know it. I well, I wrote for the Mercury goes. too, and also for the Oregonian. I wrote and the a column Oregonian. for the Oregonian, like bittersweet memoir sort of stuff. Yeah. So then, and then I came out with this like like. Well, I'm told a somewhat graphic thriller, Heartsick, and all the all of those column fans right. went to pick it up and were deeply disappointed. Oh, were they offended in some small <laughs> no, way? No, not or? offended, just disturbed. Oh, they were disturbed because they thought that you had been you were you were in touch with some your hippie roots. Well, yeah, I think that, that they thought because I wrote about my small daughter and like I wrote these sort of like yeah funny sweet stories first right. person stories. Okay, and they were expecting something else. Okay, then yes. stabbing and sex. Right, a lot of murder stuff. and then yeah. some sex yeah. with the serial killer right. lady. And I was like, and, what? Like we don't you know, know each other at all. Fiction, yeah. fiction, fiction. Right. And I, the one book um, that I have gotten to read was the uh, the Nancy Drew parody, right. which was um, it was. Have you, have you guys read uh, the Nancy Drew? Can parody? you come up with the title? Uh, Confessions of a Teenage. So close. Mm, sleuth, teen yeah, sleuth. Yeah. T ah, oh, right on. Oh, right. I get it. Yes. Who finished it today? This one, right here. My shortest book. There's, it's not a coincidence. Yeah, no, there's not a lot of kudos to that. <laughs> there's down. also some spreading. It's, it, it's a young adult title, but um, and it was, uh, but it's nice and dark for a YA, and more and more so the young adult titles. It's uh, not actually YA. It isn't. No, funny, funny, funny story. That. Funny yeah. story about that. Not, not young adult. This is a book that I wrote um, before I started writing thrillers. It was a parody of uh, Nancy Drew books. It was Nancy Drew looking back on her life as an old woman, setting the record straight. And right. I thought, I, like I'd been obsessed with Nancy Drew as a kid. Sure. And I thought it would be a great, I was trying to figure out how to write fiction, because I had been schooled in nonfiction. Um, and I was failing pretty well at all of my attempts for fiction. And I thought a parody <laughs> would be a nice like novel with training wheels. Okay, you know? yeah. Because you have kind of the scaffolding. And I came up with this idea right. to do the Nancy Drew thing because it seemed like the most important literature in my life. Right. 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 Nancy Drew. Now, did you, did you, 
you read them all as a kid. Yeah. I only read Hardy Boys. Really? Yeah, and the three investigators. Yeah. Oh, I love the, the three, three investigators. investigators. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Jupiter Jones. Jupiter anyone? Jones. Anyone? Okay. The junkyard. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. The junkyard. You had to curl through some stuff. I was like, why do you have to crawl? And uh, and so, but the... Uh, he was chubby. He was, he was chubby. He got, husky. I, he was a husky kid, and they were constantly talking about how husky he was. Yeah, they, yeah wouldn't and let the, it go. And then his buddy Pete, who was the tall athletic one yeah. that we were all supposed to have a crush on. I always had a crush on Jupiter. Me too. Because that's how I roll. That, that's yeah, right. <laughs> That's right. Jupiter Jones. That's represent. I, I'm not saying I didn't like Racer X, but I also had a crush, a crush on like the adolescent Bam Bam. Right. I don't know if you guys. So, ever... now, were you were you a um, like a Frank Hardy or a Joe Hardy kind of girl? You know what? I have to. I think I was Joe. And but the thing is, is reading the Nancy Drew parody that you wrote. I'm like, was Joe an idiot? <laughs> yeah, I might have been projecting a little <laughs> bit in my retelling. Right? Because Frank is this super fox who goes to work for like the CIA, but yeah. OSS or whatever it was called during World War II. And yeah, it was colored by the early '80s TV show with Parker Stevenson. Uh, you remember that? There we go, Parker Frank Stevenson and some haircuts. The, like, oh yeah, feathered hair. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What can I say? Did you ever? Have an animated God. crush when you were a kid? My first one was Mickey Mouse, not M- Mighty Mouse. What that is crazy? so fucked Mighty up. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. Mighty Mouse. But it's really, Mighty Mouse yeah. was your first crush. Yeah. He, there, it's raw. Like that's not normal, is it? That feels normal. He was very powerful, and he was also very polite. I liked him. I, I thought he was fantastic. I, my my first television crush was The Professor on Gilligan's Island. Oh, good choice. Good choice. Sexy. He was smart. Sexy. He was you know? smart. He had it all going Khakis on. Khakis and a nice white shirt. I know it. He was tidy. He, he was, was tidy. And he was he handsome. Was tidy. He was very tidy. For some reason, he could keep it together on that island. He could. He was, and he was, yeah, he was smart. Like, I was attracted to his mind. Yeah, sure. He could make a radio out of coconuts. I know it. He really could. When previously all you had seen is that the, the reproducing of the horses on Monty Python. Okay, I'll be over here. Okay, so, um, but then, okay, so you read a lot of Nancy Drew when you were a kid. Mm-hmm. What and other? Hardy Boys when I got and, desperate. Oh, you also did? Trixie Belden. I mean, all those. Any, anybody. Any sort of, like, child investigator. I wanted oh. desperately to be a child investigator. Harriet the Spy? No, that was too real life. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, and I didn't, like, the whole Judy Bloom thing passed me by. Like, I didn't if, do if Judy you Bloom. were not, like, the happy if the main looker? character wasn't chloroformed and in a trunk by the end of chapter one, I was not interested. Yeah, you needed it to move quick. Is yeah. that what I'm hearing? Yeah. Okay. See, here's my problem with Nancy Drew when I was a kid. Was I was like, pumps? Who can solve crime in pumps? Yeah. And a pencil skirt. And a pencil skirt, which is the the, the snark about how good looking she is, because she's con- yeah. it's first person the Nancy Drew, uh, True Confessions, and she's constantly talking about how put together and how lovely so she is. I'm so slim and attractive. She's always slim and attractive. Yeah. It's all working out for her. Yeah. And. Uh, <laughs> That was the fantasy. I don't know. Like, I read them when I was in elementary school. And went like, right. right from, I read them too, too late, you know? Like, I was oh. still reading them by, like, fourth, fifth grade. And then went right from Nancy Drew to, like, you know, Chandler and Hammett. Like, Chandler and Hammett? Well, I never read those. Like, <laughs> what are those? They're, it's other sort of, like, grown-up children investigating oh, crimes. Oh, there we go. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I loved that whole format of, like, you know, like the somebody who had a crime to solve, and I, that's yeah. what I write today. And and did you was and it was always age appropriate. You were like, now it's an adult solving crime, so then it was a child solving. Do you think that's something? Let's get into it. What? I don't understand. <laughs> no, because like, you would read when you were a kid. You write about kids solving crimes, right? And now that you're an adult, you write a, you write about adult solving. Crimes. Yeah, but I like I switched early on, like in fifth grade, to like adults. So you never went to books. like dog and horse books or anything? No, you know, like I read one, like. No, they die at the end. The animals always fucking die. And I... Just the classics, and that's what makes them classics, yeah. right? Old Yeller? I never oh. read those. Oh, the, where the red, red fern grows. Oh, I never oh. read that either. Little Women? There was like, there's always some sad sack. No. There, no, I, I, I like never that. read the classics, because you're right. They were always fucked up. They were yeah. just completely... Somebody would die. Yeah. Usually the dog. Yeah, it was... I read Jim Kajelgard and this guy named Colonel S.P. Meek, and they wrote... About about dogs, they always lived. They always lived. They the did? Dogs. The dogs always lived. The horses always lived. I think they should put great. that on the cover of books. Yeah. And the dog yeah. will live. <laughs> right. No dogs were killed in the, in yeah. the, in the, in the writing of yeah. this book. Yeah. Because with, I mean, old, I, what, I, what was the Michael J. Fox movie where he, where he was voiced a dog and there was an Irish setter? Do you guys remember that? What? 
Homeward Bound. Uh, That's yeah. at the very first home. I cried so hard at Homeward Bound with but that they Irish made setter. It, right? They that totally the made it. My five year old niece just grabbed my hand. She had seen it like, I don't know, 712 times. Uh-huh. And she was like, no, he's coming. He's coming. Oh. And I was like, you're adorable. <laughs> you're adorable. That's and right. I'm just going to wipe my face. Right. It's emotional stuff. It is emotional, but yes, you're right. The dog should always live, right? Because the dog's not going to live in real life. We're all going to outlive our pets. I feel like this is like a downer, like all of a sudden this conversation. The stabbing of people, not so much? Well, no, no. Because I'll I'll, I'll tell you why. Why? Because in the format of the thriller, the main character, the detective, always lives. He's fine. He's not going to die in the forest because his stomach has been torn (laughs) up by a cougar. He's not. Or a bear. Or be shot by his boy because he has rabies. Oh, right. That's not going to happen. That's true. It's true. He'll be okay. There might be, like, some fallout along the way. Have you ever, do you watch Dexter? You ever see that program? I have seen Uh, Dexter, This person does. Uh, I can't watch it because still a bad guy, turns out. Uh, I don't care. Judge, jury, and executioner, blow me. Anyway, so. uh, He's got got rules. Yeah, he's got some rules, man. And it yeah. involves getting to kill somebody. Yeah. And uh, it's a weird, it's a weird, um, I'm, I'm against hitting. So, uh, but here's the You're thing. against hitting in general. Like in general and everything can. above that. So everything gonna, above it as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. against war. I'm against. Uh, All right. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, I get Open-headed it. slap. Right. <laughs> the open end. Okay. And weirdly enough, Avengers, my favorite movie of the year. Yeah. So there was a lot of hitting in it, a lot of punching. See, but, yeah, see, that's a tiny bit hypocritical. I uh, t- oh, will completely own it. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. fine. I, I even like Transformers, where the pictures moved really fast, uh-huh. and it just made it look like it was real. It doesn't. I mean, it was fine. But here's, I have a question though. With oh, you have a question? Yeah, about Dexter. About Dexter. Okay. Because, okay. because here's my, my my genuine question about Dexter is how can it end? Like, what you know, the season finale. What is the? Is it a Seinfeld season finale? Is it a Mash season finale? What yeah. is it? How he they, has to get away with it. Does he? Always? He, does. he, does, he, has to, he has to get away with it and yet make some positive choice in right. his life direction. Okay. Yeah. Okay, because that would, I would watch it if that were on the, if that were on the DVD. You know, like Breaking Bad. I can't watch Breaking Bad because they keep making worse and worse life choices. So this is like an old yeller thing for you. It's what? It comes back to old yeller. Like you're it's worried con- the dog is yes, going to die. I think it is an old yeller thing. With yeah, I, 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 yeah, I don't want any part of it. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I already know people in my real life that are making terrible life choices. Right. Why would I watch that on television? Right. I can't stop the people that I'm related to. From being idiots and assholes. Yeah. Why would I watch uh, Brian Cranston portray a no, gentleman? No, like after talking to you in the green room about your family, I yeah. understand that now. Oh, my family has got all kinds of errors. Yeah. There's a, there's a, and my father, you know what keeps him young? Looking for new mistakes to make. No. That's nice. Payday advance. That's what he told me mm-hmm, recently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he doesn't have a dog, right? He does not have a dog. He does not enjoy animals, my father. What what cracks me up about the payday advance thing, who would lend $35 to a 74-year-old man? Who would do that? Where do they think he's going to get $35 in a week? It's just weird, right? His daughter. He could borrow money from his daughter. Right. He's just like, hey, you got a hundred bucks? Yes. Yes, I do, Dad. But he never asked me for money, which is just terrifying because where is he getting it? And uh, But that was my entire childhood. The streets my father, of Milwaukee. The streets of Milwaukee. My father constantly said, yeah, I got to find a hundred bucks. And you're like, then you want to ask him where is he going to find it, but you don't want the answer. No. 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 So uh, let's move to uh, your... Uh, <laughs> Unless you would like to share an inappropriate family story. You got anything? No. Okay. You're good? You're yeah. good? All right. Mm-hmm. It's because uh, your husband from Janesville. Yeah. From yeah. Rock County, Wisconsin. Rock yeah. County. Oh, yeah. he lives outside of Janesville, one of the suburbs of Janesville? No. Well, that... no. He lived in Janesville and Delavan oh. and Beloit. Oh. Yeah. Really? Some, oh, really? Nice. A lot of Wisconsinites uh, uh, come uh, to Portland because it's just not dark no, it's enough. True. And no. Enough. They're, and they're... There's like a, an underground railroad that leads here. Like it's Mark graduated from Beloit and he oh, okay. heard Portland was nice and got on a train and came here, got a job in a video store and has been here ever since. <laughs> like, and, and that video store is people. still open, I well, bet. And like he, still worked, he worked for like people. 10 years. Did he really? Oh, yeah, that's how oh, we met. We oh. met because he was my video store clerk. <laughs> it's very romantic. Now he's my dungeon master. Now he's your dungeon master. Yes, she's totally into D and D. It's kind of awesome. Yeah, applaud. His dad worked for oh, TSR. Don't humor me. 
Oh, oh no, these yes. some of these people. No, he, yeah. yeah, my my husband when uh, back when he was still Mark the Video Star clerk, uh, we were going to go up to meet his his dad and his stepmom who were having a Christmas party in Renton. And they, we were driving up I-5, and Mark turned to me, and he said, there's something you should know about my parents. And we were going through Centralia, so it was too late to, like, turn around the car. <laughs> I was like, what? And he said, well, my dad, you know, he was like, he's worked for, you know, Dungeons and Dragons. Like, you've heard of that? And I was like, yes, I've heard of that. Since the 70s. Like, he was one of the, like, early guys in Wisconsin. And, wow. Uh, and I was like, awesome. Like, that's so cool. Yep. And he said, no, you don't understand. You have to prepare yourself. Because we are going to a Christmas party, and everyone there is going to be people from my dad's work. Oh. And you're not going to understand anything they're talking about. Right. And just don't leave me. No. Um, oh, and that, it was true. Like, I didn't understand anything they were talking about. I feel about. like that's a common fear in Wisconsin when you bring your loved one. You're like, don't leave <laughs> me. Don't judge thing. me and leave right. me. Right. Right. I love you. I'm willing to ditch them in a heartbeat if you'll stay with me. <laughs> I think you're projecting a little bit. Jackie. I might be. I might be. I might project. But it's all good. Uh, but the uh... No, it was funny because like a couple of days later after like suffering through this Christmas party where I really had no idea what anybody was saying. You really did not know? No, they were talking, you know, about, you know, Gary Gygax and like the 20s and yes. like uh, making all these jokes and I right. was nothing. And then his stepmother said to me um, at one point during the evening, so Chelsea, are you a gamer? <laughs> and I said, I play Scrabble regularly. Mm-hmm. And Mark was like, that's not the game she meant. Um, right. She meant every other game. Yeah. Right? So a couple days later, D&D is what she meant. And so a couple days later, I said to Mark, we were back in Portland. I was like, you need to teach me how to play D&D. Like, I don't, I, I need to know. Well, you are a guy's dream. That's awesome. Because who doesn't want, because that's what I think I said to Andy. I was like, I'll play D&D. And he's like, yes, you will. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And then, and that was 10 years ago. I've been playing this game for, I think, since 2003 or 2004. Yeah, me t- 10. Yeah. yeah, 10 years. It's so, so are, have you been playing the same game or have you, have you? Three different. You're don't three laugh. Different. It's not oh, funny. This it's, is a serious this question. Is, and, and also, safest space in the world, the dark forest. Three, okay. I played three different characters. Okay, three Three different characters yeah. in the same uh, world. Like, what do no, you play? No, no, no. Like, uh, we. What do you guys know about? It? You guys know D and D. We did, like, we did Forgotten some... Realms. We well, we started with third edition. Third edition, right? Okay. And okay. then we went to three point five, and then our most. Our, then we went to fourth edition. Like, right. we actually took the leap in oh, the fourth you did. edition. We and then did. Pathfinder. Are you playing Pathfinder? No, no. Okay. Um, and I started like my first. My first character was a. Um, and like I should say, like it was hard to get people to play D and D with us, okay. adults. Really? Yeah. We're, yes. Okay. Yes, it was. It was hard because well, we you had gotta to find, tell them. You got to find a circle, right? But we didn't want to just like post a note at the game store. Like that seemed really lame. Right. <laughs> um, so we found friends to come, and okay. then they didn't like after the first time they got busy and didn't want to come again. Oh. Then they kept being busy again and again. So we found some other people, but they were all like these liberal arts majors, and right. nobody wanted to kill anybody. And they all were like, so, okay, and I was too, like, you know, crawling through dungeons, like, oh, there's a goblin up ahead. Okay, who speaks goblin? Okay, right. now go up and tell the goblin we mean him no harm. Oh. And then you would, you would get killed by the goblin, because goblins, you right. can't reason no with them. Right, there's no chatting with a goblin. No, there's not. There's not. And yet, it, and we'd be killed by giant bees. Like, it was constant for, like, a year. Like, <laughs> Level one is really fucking hard. Right, and so you did you get killed in level one and have to make a new character? We didn't quite get killed. There we you got go. killed later. Yeah, like Mark oh, did started you? killing us later. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. No, good it was really him. hard on our marriage. Um, uh, well, because you put your heart and soul on these characters. Oh my god! Right, like, right. Yeah, like no, seriously. After years of weekly play, do you guys play every week? We yeah, we used to. Like we we go and uh, fits and starts where we'll play like every okay. week for a year, and then sometimes twice a week, and then we'll go a couple months without playing uh, at all. All right. Um, we finally, um, after like a year of playing with our original group, we came across this um, bunker of sleeping goblins. That'll and happen. We, That'll killed, happen. we killed them all in their sleep. Oh, just slit their throats yeah, we did. the night. We had coup de nice gras. Job. Well done. Yeah, coup That's de gras. Yeah, yeah. And There's no chatting with goblins. What no, are you going to talk about? We killed about? them all in their sleep, and we felt great about it. Right. Yeah. 
like we did not regret it at all. We were like, are fuck them, game? they're goblins, yeah. and now they're dead. Now they're and dead. And we searched goblins. their bodies. Did you roll the body. Yeah. Dead off. Dead yeah. off. Um, yeah. And Mark was really proud of us, and I felt like it moved us up a little bit mm-hmm. in terms of our D&D kind of experience. Sure. Yeah, Here's my thing. So there. I started playing, and I was like, I would like to be a killing machine. Right from and the get-go. Right from the get-go, because that is, that is my fantasy, is that I would get stolen by the government, like a La Femme Nikita, end yeah. game kind of moment, yeah. where I am forced, first of all, to become very fit. And yeah. then second of all, make me work out, government. And what was your, what was your character? Uh, well, this. so what happened, we were playing Eberron 3.5, still right. are, once a month we play. We play once a month you for started about 3.5 six hours. 10 years ago? Uh, like eight. 2004, oh, maybe? What? Okay. Okay. All right. And uh, Andy Ashcraft, is that true? There we go. And uh, so uh, I am vouched. Right. And uh, so, and I was a, and he also, he's a game designer, so he massaged the world a little bit. He doesn't like psionics. Psionics is when you can read people's minds. He yeah. doesn't believe in it. Doesn't want any part of it. Mark's the same way. Yeah. He doesn't like the mechanic. Doesn't yeah. like the game mechanic. Good for Mark. Yeah. Okay. Mark is anti-vorpal as well. I'm sure he'll know what that anti-vorpal? means. Anti-vorpal? Really? Yeah. Okay. All right. <laughs> so I'll have to get, I'll, it'll be in the notes, whatever Vorpal is. And uh, so, but the thing is, so I was an archer and um, and I was also a four-armed Kalistar from another dimension. And, uh, and a sh- And a shadow what? dancer. You let her do this? Was oh, he yeah, encouraged it. Yeah, yeah, he's the jam. Yeah, he's the jam. Anyway, so but here's the thing. I didn't know the difference between the 12-sided die and the 20-sided die and still have problems with the 10 and the 8-sided uh, dies, right? And uh, as a matter of fact, the people that we play with, they're all friends of his that have been friends for 20 years. Right. And all of these guys have been playing D&D since they were 13. Well, they still had their dice set, I bet. Oh, my God. They all have crown royal bags. They're yeah. the giantest dorks yeah. in the world, right? No, like if you play D&D for real, and my dice are in my purse, actually, in the green room. Just in case. Emergency dice. Well, well no. I nice just wanted work. to show them, like, if you're a real D&D player, like you've got your own dice. It's like being a mm-hmm. pool player. You know, you don't fuck you around don't with other people's dice. equipment. I'm not using the GM's no. dice. I'm what am I? Trusting? No. So, but one of my fa- one of, and and it was uh it was we we were in this swamp where there were these lizard people, right? Yeah. And uh and there was a baby dragon and I had, in the fight that we had had, I had picked up some aging arrows and I said should I shoot the dragon with the aging arrows? And the three other players went, oh, no! And he went, if you want to. If you oh. want to, that'd be great. And, cause here's the thing. How would I know? How would you know, mustached man? You wouldn't. Is, uh. No, wait, wait, no, no, wait, wait, wait. Logic. Like you've got a baby dragon. Baby dragon. Do you want to make it bigger? Right. No. Do you, no. Because here's what I didn't know. You don't want but to. But you want to kill, because I had killed the slee stacks with the aging arrows, right? Like they had gotten old and turned into dust. Right. So I thought maybe the dragon, I didn't know dragons live for hundreds of years. Right. This was early and on while you were playing. Super, like, really first early month. on. Right, okay. Yeah, like second or third <laughs> game. Sure. And so, because here's dragons not only become more powerful, more magical, right? Yeah. And more defense. I mean, it's, uh, it was the dumbest thing ever. Huh? Huh? Yeah. It's a great anecdote. And so you uh, did that. You actually did it. You went through with I it. I did it. I didn't do it because the other three were like, <gasps> right. and then and then probably four years later, um, I have uh, an arch enemy, the Luminous, and uh, they're balls of light and they're evil. And so, uh, but I'm also a rogue, right? My character's a rogue. I played several rogues. Rogues are awesome. Oh, rogues are awesome. Yeah. And I was like, oh, there's a luminous ship over there. And one of my co, one of my other players is like, well, you know what a rogue would do. They'd go do some reconnaissance on that ship. And I was like, oh, is that what, is that what a rogue would do? Okay. And the other two are like, what are you doing? They're going to kill her. And uh, so I go by myself, and then they had to save me. So uh, that one that I was allowed sometimes. to. That happens sometimes. But I've never died. I've, we, none of us, we had one character die, and then we had an, um, yeah, there's, it's been pretty good. It's been pretty, but we've been play, we only play once a month. Yeah, I mean, dying is a hassle for everyone. Well, that's, that's what I'm told. I'm told that it's a it hassle. Is. It really is. And so, how have you made several characters? Because that's the hard part for me is where you got to know all these character. stats. Yeah. Yeah. No, I have. Well, I've done three. And have you read the books? Like all of his friends have memorized. We have these all the books. All every the books. single. Well, Mark's dad, you know, is, works for D and D, so right. we get all the books for free. So oh. we have all the and books. And the, these books are like forty five dollars a piece. Yeah. And there's like the Monster Manual, and then there's the Player's Handbook, and then there's different like oh, books there, there's and, many more books than that. Yeah, right, right, many books. So they're constantly like a stack. Do you play books, with like, figures? Do you play with figures? Yeah, yeah. And do you play with uh, Dwarven Forge dungeon pieces? Well, um, I don't think I do. I think uh, what I have is 
uh, a plastic character that I glued extra arms onto. You didn't really. You didn't even paint your own character. I did not paint my own character. Oh, I've not man, gotten, that's Are you lame. painting your own characters? I used to. Yeah, I did. I even got one of those like big, like magnifying lights. You know. Oh, the <laughs> big sort of roundy so kind can, of makeup. Yeah, you light. can work on the. Yeah. Nice. I did. I had my first Moxie, who was a half elf rogue. My first character. Half elf I rogue. I painted mm-hmm. very carefully, and then my second character. Um, it was a Duina uh, Armand Trope. <laughs> What's a Duina and Armand Trope? A Duina Armand Trout. Oh, was that her she name? She's a halfling, yes. Oh, a fair halfling enough, fair enough. rogue again. Oh. And then my They're third sneaky ki- rogues. My, I really and I got good at being sneaky. Um and, and like played her for years. Like she was my most I feel most strongly about her. And then my third character with fourth edition was a um, dragonborn warlord. Because oh. I wanted to be like something big and huge and kind of butch. Right, right. After being You're a wearing a character. D&D t-shirt uh, that says the clerics are lame. Yeah. That's what the t-shirt says. It says clerics are lame. And clerics my first lame. new, uh, this is my first magic user I'm playing in Pathfinder, is a cleric. And it's, I'm learning how to use spells. Because I never oh, yeah. know how to use spells. You got to, first of all, there's a lot of maintenance if you're a spell caster. You're constantly after looking in the fucking book. And uh, I don't want to. You guys, you play 3.5 still? Uh, we play the 3.5, and then we're also playing Pathfinder. I'm a cleric okay. in Pathfinder. Okay. So Pathfinder is essentially like 4.5. There you go. And Because uh, there were some problems with 4.0, I'm told. I'm yeah. told that there were some problems. Yeah. No, they Do you feel of... that's true? Well, they, yeah. I mean, mm, it's, like, right. it's, it's complicated. There's family involved. <laughs> Is it now? Is it TSR is the owner of D and D still, or is it the Wizards Coast of the Coast? Is now, yeah. Magic they... cards. Do you play any Magic cards? Magic the no, Gathering. I don't play Magic the Gathering. Oh, it's I nice. I have a joke where I say "tap that mana," and it's a sex joke, huh? Really? Who doesn't love that joke? Awesome. It's a Magic card joke because you tap land. That's what you do. That's what gives you power. I can magic. only keep up with the D and D, and only that barely. We have a room, like first of all, our last house, like a Warhammer in, kind of room. Our last house that we lived in, I decided. That this was after we slayed all all the goblins in their sleep. Are you living and, silver spoons? And Mark was really <laughs> excited. I decided that I was going to build him like a a a best a, girlfriend no, ever. No, I was going to build him like a D and D room, and so we had this Sweet. like space in the basement that was like on the way to the laundry room that I thought was a room, but really was a hall. Okay. Oh. Well. But I I went to the paint store. <laughs> okay. And I got this um like stone dungeon patterned wallpaper. Ooh. All right. Yeah, and uh-huh, I got uh-huh. many rolls. Took it up to the clerk, and she said, "What are you working on?" <laughs> and I Portland? said, "A surprise for my husband." <laughs> and she, you know, she, she winked at me, and I totally like. I realized she thought that I was like installing a sex dungeon, <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't correct her. Because the well. truth was less embarrassing somehow. Right. Um, but now we live in a new house. Right. The, the house that th- the thrillers bought. Right, right. And we actually have, like, we built out the whole cellar and we have, like, a proper, like... A full-on a game D&D room. A D&D room. Like, a proper D&D room. You got a nice big table? Oh, yeah, all that. Nice there's big... a mini bar. There's shelves full of books. That's there's nice. There's a sign that says... Um, uh, fantasy role player, parking only, all others will be vanquished to another realm. Huh? Huh? That's just good writing. That's ah. just good writing right there. We, and there's you like know, a we, thousand little figures and they're all categorized in drawers. Oh, you got drawers, you got drawers full of, he's got yeah. some drawers of figures. We have, um, we have an iguana, that's our pet. Or okay. his, his bee, he's had it from a baby. It's now a three and a half foot long lizard. Does he play dragons when you do D&D? Uh, he said he br- he has a colossal dragon that a friend of his gave, br- colossal being the biggest uh, you're doomed no one can beat the colossal dragon yeah. sometimes when he first got it he brought it out at a game thing but the iguana you don't work with the iguana on that we never do work with the iguana we we have the the, the Tiberius would not want to he would ruin the game he would. it's like a, somebody's little brother you're like no fuck off no yeah. go yeah you can't have the iguana at the game. But we have, yeah, but there I is a not. sign next that's to his. A, that's a bumper sticker, isn't it? What? You can't have the iguana at the game. <laughs> you can't have the iguana. At, no, the iguana ruins everything when you're trying to play Pandemic. Do you play other board games? Board games? Yeah, board games, the things with the boards and yeah, the pieces. No, I'd like a, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. I, yes, many, Be- uh, many board right, games. Right, right, because you have a game room. Uh, you, you must have people over to play all the great board games of the world, too, right? We play the board games upstairs, usually. Oh, really? The D&D room is sacred. Oh. 
Do you sage it here in Portland? No, there's no saging that I know of. I believe right. guests sometimes. Maybe they well, do because sometimes there's some bad energy, man. Sometimes yeah, there's happens. so much bad energy. Right? Yeah, at D&D. And, like, you know, like, it's hard being married to your dungeon master. It, it can it be. It is. It can be. No, because they, you know, like, my husband's bloodied me, you know? Like, what oh. the fuck? <laughs> like, she gave, he gave me a third eye once for a while. Oh, really? Yeah. He, and he, he gave I've, our Warforged, uh, no, it was, a, it was a shapeshifter. He gave him rabbit ears once. Oh. That ain't right. That ain't right. <laughs> Took away his dignity. That's what he did. And I don't think, you know, I don't think characters should be killed. Like, I feel like, and it's a thing, like, where the DM is both, you're like, he's your referee and your guide, right, through this world. Like, he leads you through this world, and um, he's got a little screen, and he, you know, rolls his dice, and you roll your dice to see, like, if there's a trap, and if he rolls higher than you, then you didn't, you don't find the trap, you fall through it. But, you know, if you roll higher, then you do find the trap, and you're saved. And, you know, so he, he's... And then he plays like barmaids and the people you sort of meet along the way. The um, NPCs, the non player NPCs. characters. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he also plays like all the monsters who are trying to kill you. Oh, yeah. And that can be complicated. It is I com- think, and, and emotionally. The story, well, it can be complicated emotionally uh, when, when it later. keeps attacking. Like, when well, you there are the five game. people, and yet you're the one, like, I'm the one who gets hit with magic missiles? Like, what the fuck? Like, Just I'm see, one of five people, and I'm not even, like, I'm farthest from the door. He rolled the dice. That's what happened. That's what he always says. He's like, yeah. oh, it's the dice, man. Here's like, I thing. didn't kill him. It's does, the dice. Does that D&D room have a door on it? It does, yeah. You gotta close that door and move on. Oh. I try. It's over. You I gotta try, take but it. like, we actually have conflict about this. <laughs> no, we do. We actually do. You yes. have conversations when the game is over about why it happened, More why like it went lack down. lack of conversations. <laughs> oh, that's a little silent. Silent, silent treatment. <laughs> After D and D, because I feel like he is not. You might have got me. taken for a buggy ride. Yeah, well, I feel All like right. if you know that he could just be a little more generous. He killed a friend of ours. Yeah. Yeah, who had had a very bad day. This was years ago. No, he had, and he played with us for like six years at that point, and he had had a oh. very bad day, and he had come to our house to play D and D, and he clearly was sad, and he, he made said he had been made kicked out of his house because of a indiscretion in his marriage his wife had kicked him out of the house and he told us the whole story choices off the off the table on the table it turned out that you know like his wife had kind of every right to kick him out of the house he was staying at a motel sure but it was a bad day it was a bad day. bad day so but the thing is mark had gone to school not only with college in wisconsin not only with this friend but with the wife right oh and coincidentally enough like a couple hours into that night Mm mm-hmm the, the, he, Mark kills this guy's character who he's played for like six or seven years. Like, kills him dead. Like, like you know, not, un, like minus not ten. even to be resurrected. Like, there was no chance. Like, and he was killed by like these awful frogmen. Like, it was like a stupid way to die. <sighs> like, there was nothing salvageable about it. I feel like most people die through stupidity though, don't you? No, I, I felt it was in, it was vindictive and unnecessary. Oh, do you think so? I, like, do you I, think Mark had his wife's back and was trying to pay him back? Subconsciously, like I confronted Mark afterwards. A little bit of whack a mole. He was like, "I'll show you to cheat on our mutual friend who happens to be your wife." Boom. I didn't say cheat. Oh, there you go. All right, all right. I no, said no. there was some inappropriate all right. behavior. Obviously, yeah. Any, a anyway. bad check was written. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> okay. Bye. But that's why you come see the live show, people. That's why you um, come see the live show. And I said, like, to Mark, like, how could you do this? Like, you know, how could you, how could you kill our friend? And, and he mm-hmm. said just what you said. He was like, I didn't do it. It was the dice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like the dice, it's behind a screen. Like, you yeah. can't just, you know, take you away know? a couple, you know? Like, you can't just be like, oh, there was an eight yeah. instead of a ten. And did you say dice don't kill people, people kill people? I sh- I, yeah, I should have. <laughs> I've made it clear to Mark. Like, if he ever fucking kills me, I mean, that's we're not having sex again. Like, that's the end. Really. You're gonna to, yeah, you're going to want some dungeon wallpaper. What? No. Anyway. I know. Here's, so have you, have you mostly just played rogues and, 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 and fighters? Yes. Okay. Because there's other things. I was that, a gnome bard. Oh, you did a bard? I was. Yeah, my, it was my first character. I, I don't admit that a lot because it's so lame. It feels lame, the it's bard. Lame. Like I'd like, I, I, they discontinued I a... both the gnome and the bard. Oh, they, they discontinued both. <laughs> yeah, because they were decided they, they were lame. But it's interesting because you're a writer and I'm a per, uh, and I'm a comic. So I think that like I wanted to be a bard because I feel like in real life I'm a bard, right? Yeah. IRL man. 
It's all happening for me. Yeah, but you so, know, like you're a storyteller, right? So you'd think I, I should yeah. play a bard, like, and you're loot. like, but the thing I is, is there's, you can't do anything on the table game as a bard. You can't accept, yeah, glitter dust. What is that? No, glitter dust is so handy, and I had it when I was when I was you were boop. a bard. <laughs> boop was the name of the bard boop. I played. All right. Boop. All right. And glitter dust, like you throw it. It's like so cheap. You have a little satchel, right? You you're throw right, it. You can see anybody who's invisible, uh-huh. right? Because it coats them. Right? And it's, is it cheap? No, oh, it's so cheap. And you can If I were a bard, I would just spend want. my life just doing this. Yeah. Just, yeah. I'm gonna, we're just, and then the game master would be furious because yeah. he's like, do I have to continually make up invisible people for you to people to fight? Because, because when, when your character is doing something over and over and over again, the game master kind of has to go, <sighs> yeah, I guess I should create something for you to fucking find. Stop digging. And, right. Uh, right. <laughs> like, there better be treasure. If, if, like, one of your characters has a shovel and keeps digging, or a magical shovel or something. I the first a magical shovel. What the fuck? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> Would that be lame? There is no magical shovel. There isn't? No. A magical bag of holding that I could shovel into? All right. You can All do right. that. That's possible. All right. And uh, <laughs> the, first, uh, the first bad guy that I met when playing was something called a mind flare. Oh, that, I don't the, know he that. was the first one that scared the shit out of me for reals. I was like, first of all, doesn't that sound terrifying? A mind flare? Yeah. It's all I've got, people. It's all I've got. And uh, so uh, to meet him, and a mind flare will completely go into your brain box and like wipe it. Like take it, like what, skill points or I, you know intelligence? What? It's what does it, Andy? Oh, it physically so pokes it, a hole in your So it like it's hit head? points. It's not like it's taking skill or feats or Okay. But eventually it just sucks your brain out and then you're just a shell of a person? Okay. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, sounds bad. <laughs> yeah. It, it really, and they were like, come back to town, the mind flayer who happened to be the mayor or something of the yeah, town. They're always the mayor. <laughs> he was like, we want to talk to you. And I was like, run. And, uh, cause I, the better part of valor sometimes, uh, which, I mean, that's where, that's where, that's where sometimes the game goes, um, he says that, that, that he'll write the game, but then we'll be playing it. And his friends have played the game so much, they won't fall into the, sometimes they'll fall into the trap because they're like, you know, as a game player, I know that that's a trap, right. but my character wouldn't know. God, I hate those people. <laughs> He's not, but they're not gaming the game. He's just like, because I've learned that that's a term, is when people try yeah. to like, they try to um, like sort of min-max their character, right? Mm-hmm. Is that the term? Right, where they, they, they want the minimum, they, they like try to put all of their skill set together so you can't ever beat them. And uh, um, so they that's aren't the those point, kinds though, of guys. Isn't it? Yeah. Oh, is that the point? Is that how you play? What's well, happening? No, like I tried, I do, I try to like, I do try to like, whenever you go up a level in D&D, you know, you get more skill points and you get more feats and you can, yeah. Like, yeah, all right. Disseminate them. And yeah, of course you want to disseminate them wisely and win. Like you said, you were a shadow dancer, right? Right. Which is a prestige class, which you have to, like I, I had gone, like, no, congratulations. Thank That's you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> No, and I had thought like that I wanted to be Delta, 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 but then I went through Rush, <laughs> and I decided they were all assholes. Um, no, I like I wanted to be a shadow dancer oh, early did you? on. Of course, mm-hmm. I but I've been a rogue. I told you that. Right. Like, what rogue wouldn't want to be a shadow dancer? I ask sure. you. Um, but you have to like I I didn't want to like you have to watch these, your... Well, you, I, you first of all you have to have a five in dance. Right. You've got to spend five skill points on dance. Right. I got, I got decks coming out of my ears. Are you yeah. kidding? I can tumble I, my way yeah. around the world. Like, I can tumble, too. Like, I was a really great tumbler. Were you a good tumbler? Yeah, but I, I didn't want sp- to spend that, that, those skill points on dancing and some of the feats right. that I needed to, like, yeah. To, yeah, to, to, be, to be a shadow dancer. Because feats, you only I get feats every it. couple of levels. Yeah. And so you've got to spend them wisely. And as an archer, I had to, you got to buy, like, uh, precise shot and then melee, I think it is, or 
or whatever. But the thing, because if you be all range, if you're an archer, pardon, it's going to be all range, range stuff. They're range the stuff, but yeah, because I don't have um, like you could. You, know, you might need silver tips if you're dealing with like vampires. You don't know. Let me tell you about this bag of arrows I've got, and they're nice. They're all made out of darkness, and so they're never ending. Uh, and an so never sweet. ending quiver of arrows. Oh, man. You know who could use that, Hawkeye? Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you guys uh, saw Avengers, but I kept waiting for him to run out of arrows, and he never did. He never does. Why would he, I He's suppose? He's a superhero. He's a superhero, That's and why. he always has extra arrows on him. So do you... Uh, um, I was going to ask, so, so, so most of your, your D&D is focused on the game, right? So do you ever read any of the fantasy stuff? Did you read any of it? Inter- tr- like books, novels? Yeah. You know, I read, like, in middle school, like, I read, yeah, some. But, right. like, Dune and, like, some of those sort of classic fantasy right. books. Oh, but, Dune. But, yeah, beyond that, honestly, I was too busy, like, watching characters getting chloroformed and put into trunks. Oh, right, right. You were still you were still reading the crime. Yeah. You were, you were on board yeah, with that. Yeah, I was, I really wanted to, yeah, see the detectives. See, my nephew read, uh, I never was into fantasy. I read The Lord of the Rings when I turned oh, 19. Sure. yeah. Mark uh, read me the entire Lord of the Rings trilogy out loud. Out loud? Out loud. But it, did it, did it? Yeah. Oh, wow. Isn't that hot? Oh, there we go. <laughs> For this crowd, it is. It is. Like, it well was done. so great. Like, you know, those are long fucking books. And those it was are, And the beautiful. And, and the I read poetry? The as a kid. Kid, but yeah. I, had not, I had not read The Lord of the Rings. And, yeah. I mean, you know, I think those are three of the best books ever written, honestly. Ever, ever written. And They're it doesn't fantastically matter. Fantastically. Let's have a round books. of applause for J.R.R. Tolkien. Yeah. Yeah. People who listen to The Dork Forest know my opinion of the movies, which is that they're the best episodes of Willow ever. Uh, hey, and, and here's what I have to say. I loved Willow. I'm not saying, <laughs> Willow, use the wand. Uh, I loved Willow. Oh, my God, there's a peck with an acorn pointed at me. And, I mean, there's a, they're amazing movies, uh, but uh, they are like not. I feel like making conflicting statements. No, no. Well, because the books are amazing. Yeah. And the movies are not great adaptations, is what I'm saying. I felt, um, like, I felt so struck. And maybe because it, there had been such a little time between when Mark had read the books and when I saw the movies. See, I read the books every year. I felt... <sighs> I, but you're, you know, your impressions of the characters were formed the first time you read them. Yes. And, and I, like, I was amazed at Peter Jackson's ability to, like, bring to life, like, these Many characters. of the characters. Exa- yeah. Well, exactly yeah. as I thought. He had did the world them. perfectly, I thought. Yeah. It looked amazing. And if I can forget what he did to Faramir and what he did to Frodo and Sam, uh-huh. it's fine. Uh huh. Because I don't care. You can have elves at Helm's Deep. Fine. I wish they would have showed up. But uh, but I have this to say about Faramir. Leave Faramir alone. And Sam and Frodo <laughs> you never... You so strongly about them. I genuinely You're feel sort strong. of flushed in the cheek. Yeah. Yeah. I will storm out! Oh. And, uh, <laughs> but like, and so I fear the Hobbit movies just because uh, he's doing a lot of dwarven stuff. He's pulling a lot of stuff from the appendices. Yeah. It's lovely. No, but, um, well, and the thing about that, like, I feel like... Most people don't appreciate the fact that The Hobbit is a kid's story. Right. And Lord of the Rings is for adults. Like right. the three of them. You know, like the, the trilogy, it's, it's for very, adults. Right. And most people don't get that distinction. They think they're all kid stories, they're all young adult, or like they don't get it. Right. And um, of course, it'll the be end of The Hobbit is very dark and very adult. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the, the five armies. The gang the rape. The five it's armies. terrifying. Which one? The gang rape. The end of The Hobbit. The gang rape. Yes. <laughs> I remember that. It was Saturday Night Fever version, right? <laughs> Really disturbing. Was Travolta was there in that car. Anyway, um, do you ever see Saturday Night Fever? I guess I have. Yeah. I, I saw it only recently and realized, holy shit, this is not a light movie at all. No, it's actually not. It's super dark. There's good dancing though, and uh, <laughs> but uh, but when I when I when when my brother because my brother turned me into the Lord of the Rings when I was like 19, and then his son, his stepson, was about 12 and started reading books. And you know when you have when there's a lot of kids around, you want to read. I I decided I was going to read everything my nieces and nephews were reading so Why? that I didn't have to talk to them about what they were watching on television. I was like, let's talk about something else. I really don't care about iCarly. See, but let's see, not to interrupt. Yeah, but this disturbs me greatly. The fact that so many adults right now are reading YA. First of all, oh. like you see all these like I went on vacation and everybody, all the women around the pool, all these like 35 year old women mm-hmm. were reading um, Hunger Games. You know, like it's like, yeah. like, like what the fuck? 
like, it's a poor know, man's dragon tattoo book. book. Like, yeah. Or, you know, the Twilight books. Like, I get that some people read those, but it's right. still but I read it's all, weird. The, 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 you read them, don't you? Well, you read all the YA books. Still. I do. I don't you read, read the Hunger all Games them. and the Twilight series. Yeah, the Hunger yeah. Games, uh, I didn't. I don't enjoy a revenge fantasy. Uh, but you, so. re- you read... One. I read the Dragon Tattoo books. I read the But those the are adult games. books. I mean, Dragon Tattoo, whatever you think of them, they're adult books. Right. I'm interested oh, in the so. fact that so many people, oh, you... especially women right now, are reading young adult books. Right. For but I read, I read everything, though. I mean, because I'm on the road so much, there's a lot of downtime, and i got to stop the voices. But you so, know, there's, uh, there's lots of books out there that aren't right. young adult books. But You're I, an but adult. I, Right, and I read, I, I read adult fiction. I read adult nonfiction. Yeah. I read uh, crap, which is my porny romance novel yeah. sometimes, and right? And young adult books? And young adult books. Why? Which is, um, well, I like a nice story. Don't you like a nice story? I do, but there are many young adult adults? stories that I haven't read yet. Which uh, Now, what's a book that you haven't read that you would like to read? Oh, my God. I mean, there's so many. You know, right. like Vonnegut not, and Hemingway. And like, you know, and beyond, I've read all beyond, of Vonnegut. Beyond the like classics, like... There are just so many fucking books that come out every day, and I'm just I'm curious. And I have a seven year old kid. Like we've right. read all the Harry Potter books with her. Like I mean, I get that it's a great story, and I loved sitting down and reading them with her, and was totally engaged. Yeah. And having said that, I would never have read those books without, without her. her. Right. Because they are children's books. Right. And that's why I started reading the books that the, all the kids in my family were reading because I wanted to have to, to, something to talk about with them. But and but I stopped reading them when it got horrible. Like the Dragonlance series. Have you ever read that crap? Uh, my nephew read See, it all. again, again. Like, why are you reading that crap? <laughs> I read it because he was reading it. Uh huh. So you read the Harry Potter books because your daughter was reading it, no, right? No, because my husband like the Tolkien Tolkien read, read them out loud. Read all seven out loud, and we okay. sat and my and I sat and listened, and yeah, it was a family event. It was a family event. That's yeah. what it was. With when I read the craptastic first three Dragonland series, and then the following nine, and then I told young Paul Boyer, "You're on your own." Uh, <laughs> and then he read the following thirty, and uh, the same with uh, the Red Wall books with my niece, and the uh, the books with the but. See, uh, I I think kids, though, like when they're reading those books, like Nancy Drew books, honestly, yeah. in retrospect, kind of crappy. Not great. They're not, not great. great. No. Is that, is that my phone? Oh, my God, it You'd is. You'd be furious if it wasn't you. It's the find my iPhone alert. Somehow it was activated by Surrey in my pocket. Uh-huh. And I know exactly where my iPhone is. Right it's in right your hand. in my pocket. Sweet, sweet justice. Anyway, okay, I, so. I, well, this is the thing. I feel yeah. like... Kids, you know, can read books and find so much in them that we can't. Like, you can read that and be like, it was terrible. But, you know, it doesn't matter if your so nephew it, is reading it or it I'm reading like, it as like, a kid. Like you're like, bossing them by being or taking away something from their No, it's just like, what's experience? the point? Like, in terms of sharing that experience, well, do you they're want to sit having there and watch? this experience that is so specific to their books right. especially it's 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 not like sitting around watching tv or watching a movie which can be a social experience a book is an experience between you and the book and right. it's your interaction with the book and it's the story that you tell each other while you're you know while you're reading right um and that story you know like that's it's private and special and can be amazing so you feel it's suck. slightly invasive or i'm just saying it your your experience with that book is going to be completely different Right. And the kids. But if but if my if if my seven year old nephew is reading a book and he's like, This is what the book is about, let's talk about the book uh-huh. then why can't I read it and have that conversation with him? No, you can. And I okay. you know, of course that I think it's it's also there's also the, the perspective of like reading those same books then creates a kid who wants to read more and talk about it more. Yeah. I just I just come back to the fact that and maybe it's that, because I write only reading incredibly those, disturbing adult thrillers. <laughs> Yes. That for some reason I've i am like disturbed when I see you know. A bunch why of people, are you not reading my? Right. Awesome why are you adult reading disturbing? my disturbing adult thrillers and instead right. reading about a teenage archer in a TV show? Why right. is that happening? Well, I'll tell you. And I think there's a cultural explanation that we haven't quite put our fingers on. Oh. Huh. <laughs> well, there could be, there could be the fact that our generation, probably the first generation, um, that never grew up. I think I think that we are the first generation that who we're is, constantly still collecting toys. We and are the first off generation who has read young adult fiction. 
Right. That's for fucking sure. Like our parents' generation was not reading our right. books when right. we were kids. No, no, no. You know, that they has never not. happened before. We are the first generation to, who read is, the who, kids. to read our kids' books. Yeah. And we're, you know, it's, it's just like what they say, like women are the first, the moms of our generation are the first generation to wear like, you know, low yeah, yeah. skinny I jeans mean, you, you, and like, you, you read know, to dress like our daughters. Right. And so you, you read Tom Sawyer to your kid and then when they can read, you're, they're like, you're on your own. I'm going to be over here reading The Chosen. Fuck off, right? Well, no, no. I mean, not fuck off, but I mean, you know what I mean? Like, I mean, you, you read to your kids until they can read, or they, this is how it used to be. Like, when mm-hmm. I was a kid, my, yeah, my parents didn't read. They were, they were like, whatever. And then if they saw a book that had like a naked chested Indian dude on it, they were like, what are you reading? Let's check in. And a that was a naked about, chested Indian dude. Native American. There was a lot of, when I was a kid, I used to read a lot of adventure books. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Who doesn't want an adventure with some Native American? Eliza, Eliza, the other day, my seven-year-old came in from playing outside with a friend, and I was like, "What are you guys doing?" And she said, "Playing Native American." Oh yeah, oh, yeah. like without any like that sounds so weird to me. Yeah, my people call it maze. <laughs> playing Native anyway, American. Um, <laughs> no, yeah, it's, but, but it's I think not you're right. I'm not being there interested. is something weird. It's just saying like, right? You know, you're reading books. Like, tell me about the books you're reading. Yeah. We don't have to always be in their thing. Like True. experiencing everything that they're experiencing. It is bossy Magoo. I think that's yeah. part of it. It's like, you know, not yeah. wanting our kids to have a thing that's private in there. Yeah, I'm not going to dash off and buy those. Uh, there's adult t- tennis shoes that light up and they that have uh, roller skates I on the bottom. I want those. I really do. <laughs> is that now, terrible? Now, why is that okay? Those are awesome. Well, yes, they're they awesome. They light up so and was, have wheels The first the Hunger back. Games was awesome. It you was didn't it? enjoy the first Hunger Games? I didn't read it. I haven't read it. The third one was where, the, was where it all fell apart for me. Anyway, so... So you, um, read, you made it through the first two? Oh, my God. I, I read... I just... Yeah. yeah, I'm like, and we're done. Next. And uh, so I read also a lot of comic books. I read comics, too. Oh, do you read comics? I have no oh. problem with comics. Some comics. What do you enjoy in the, in the comics? Do you Marvel, DC, indie? What oh, are we doing? Oh, Marvel. Oh, oh, Marvel. Well done. Really? Let's I'm, do this. I'm very, very, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm married, I'm married to you, a, a yeah, boy yeah. who was all Marvel. And yeah. I had, like, I, I had spent, like, you know, I, I, I grew up, like, during this sort of Dark Phoenix X-Men saga. So, like, uh, how can you not get into, like, I didn't read Marvel? them until I met him. Really? Yeah, I read Spider-Man in junior high. Uh-huh. And then uh, I stopped reading Spider-Man and read a lot of mercenary books set in Mbele uh, in Africa. Anyway, so um, there was a lot of uh, Merc books. Uh-huh. Anyway, but, uh, but you read them yourself before you met him? I did, yeah. No, and, okay. I, and I also read some, like, I and read Elfquest read and Richie Phoenix Rich. <laughs> oh, dark, yeah, Richie Rich, that tool Richie bag. Rich and Tintin, like a tonton. <laughs> That's fun. Um, and so, yeah, but then I, you know, lapsed for a, a while, and then mm-hmm. when, yeah, Mark and I got together. It, like, we have a box every Wednesday, yeah. And, yeah. Mark, and Mark, like, I will go in, if it's and starts, where I will read, you know, I'll have something every, a title that I pick up every week, and then I'll right. go a long time without reading them. But, um I mean, there's some great and there's some incredible, like, local, you know, comic writers. Here in Portland, are there some amazing... Oh, my amazing, God. Why uh, wouldn't there be? Of course. You guys are awesome. You got the bearded youth movement but here. The, they a, all the draw. The Alias on. series, uh, Brian Michael Bendis. I don't know if you guys have read this. And it has nothing to do with the TV show Alias. Oh, Alias. I have not. I read Powers. He writes that. He does, yes. Yeah, I well, like you, that. You totally need to read Alias. Okay. Seriously. Yeah, I'm in. I'm it, in. It's so great. Okay, is it uh, an alias? Is it what's it about? It's about a superhero who decides she doesn't want to be a superhero mo- anymore and becomes a private detective. So it's like right oh. so in my wheelhouse. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Yeah, that. Do you read Brubaker? Do you read the Ed Brubaker? No. He writes noir. Right. He writes criminal, this criminal series. One of my favorite ones, because it's only one book, so it's finite, those of you who need to read one comic book and get an arc, because uh, he writes, cr- criminal is just, it's kind of ongoing, and uh, coward is kind of ongoing, but incognito is about uh, a supervillain in the witness protection program. Uh, see, I like that. And it's awesome. I like the stuff that's real, but superhero-y at the same time. Yeah, yeah, who doesn't? Who doesn't want that? That's good times. Have you, did you read the um, the Green River Killer graphic novel that came Wait, out this past year? Which one? Green River Killer. Green Have you guys River read that? Killer. No, who uh, wrote that? It's it was Tom Jensen's son. Tom Jensen was one of the investigators on the Green River Killer case. Okay. Have you heard so, of the Green River Killer? No. Right. Because right? he grew up in Wisconsin. And right. You're all is busy he with here? Ed Gein and is Jeffrey Dahmer. Yeah, yeah. We got other. He killers. is here. Stand up. <laughs> 
thank God, finally revealed the Zodiac Killer. The, the and, Green uh, River Killer. He killed, he, the first bodies were found um, in 1982 when I was 10. Okay. And they caught him 20 years later. And he, oh. he cut a deal. Um, to, to, he pled to 48 murders. And they wow. think he murdered a lot more women. Like, it was, it was a big deal in the Pacific Northwest. Like, wow. and people here know who he is, and people yeah. elsewhere don't. It's so interesting to me. Okay, but Michelle he, ra- he raped and might. murdered women. Oh, did, is that was this? Uh, lots and lots of women, and some very young. So, like, growing up in Bellingham, Washington, to me, he killed, you know, kids, teenagers, because some of them were 15 or 16. I feel that's what Paul prostitutes. Ryan did in, in the in previous. <laughs> Metaphorically. In another, just in Wisconsin, I feel like he's just too creepy. He looks like any number of guys who tried to date rape me in college. Oh, he is such, yeah. He's just sort of creepy about him. He just just has that slick, willy, foul. Yeah, he's a rich boy. And then he opens his pie hole and says something horrifying. Yeah. Anyway. Do Do you know, though, that he, Paul Ryan, a little bit of trivia, worked with my husband's mother at a McDonald's in Janesville, Wisconsin? Wow. That is weird. Is that, yeah. And so then my brother trash. Scott got what? to meet Jeffrey Dahmer. No. And I was telling you. See, and yeah. it all comes together then. It all comes together. There's no, yeah, yeah, my brother Scott lived in the same neighborhood as Jeffrey Dahmer. He's like, oh, I know that guy. When he got hired. When, when he got uh, arrested, rather, hired. Hired. When he got when he, hired. When, when the cops hired him uh, to get rid of their tiny gay Asian problem. <laughs> That might be the darkest thing I've said. Oh, that is so like it seems, it really seems dark. Can I shake your hand? Yes, that thank you. <laughs> right. was really brave. And I, I feel like it's you. been an hour. Has it been an hour? It feels anybody? like it, it's been an hour. <laughs> Let's, but let's, uh, let's plug some stuff. ChelseaCane.com, of course, right? Five books. Uh, the last one, Kill You Twice. Five thrillers. Several uh, humor books before that. Several humor books before that. And I Very think, funny. Uh, how many Nancy Drew books? Two? One, was it just the one? Just the one parody, which it's is a, not a young adult novel. Which is not, it's an adult novel. It's funny for Dude, adults. And at one point he says, that's why they called him Hardy. That's a dick joke. Hi, I'm here all week. Okay, but there's, so. No, there's funnier bits than that there, also. It's actually, it's really funny. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And, and then, it's short. It's and very we never short, did which talk is why Jackie being, read it. It's right. I, I, read, uh, I read your long books too. This I'll is read why a, you read YA, isn't it? Because they're, they're short? <laughs> yeah. 200 pages. I, uh, I can't, it can be one of the reasons why I read YA, mm-hmm. just because I gotta consume it and then move the heck yeah, on. Yeah. But I also read, uh, I, I read your longer books, your, uh, your Faulkner. Not, but yes, you say your, but again, the universal plural, not me specifically. No, you no, don't not read yours. my longer books. Oh, I'll, I'll try them, but during the daytime. That's what it's gonna happen. There's electricity that makes light. I know, but it's all scary, cause then I go to bed and then all of a sudden, like, did you ever read Joe Hill? Uh, yeah. Lock and Key. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's uh, Stephen King's son wrote the scariest comic book in the world, and uh, it's very scary and it's a lot of serial killery mm-hmm. and uh, and Creep Factor twelve off the Richter scale. Yeah. And guess who likes to read that during the day? This I like one, serial Jackie killery. Cajun. I like that. Do you word. like that as a term? Yes, you I like do. it? You can use it. All right. Knock yourself out. Can I use it as a blurb? <laughs> you can serial killery. It. You can say Jackie Cation <laughs> said that Chelsea Kane is serial killery. And uh but this has been this has been fascinating. Thank you so much for being on the Dork Forest. Thank you for having me. Yay! <laughs> and thank you guys. I have patches if you guys want them. So thanks a lot for coming out, you guys. Have I'll, a good I'll night. show you my dice later. They're in the back. <laughs> Please give a warm Portland welcome to Barbara Holm. Uh, clap for Stacy, please. My name's Barbara. My roommate's gay. Thank you. And the other day, my mom was like, "How gay is your roommate?" And I was like, "Well, he has sexual intercourse with men." on a regular basis. So he's gayer than I am straight. (laughs) I read a lot of books about vampires and witches, you know, for the articles. (laughs) I read this uh, article recently that this group of Florida fundamentalists was trying to get Marvel comic books to pull an issue of X-Men from the shelf just because it features a gay marriage. That's really fucked up, you guys. I don't want Republicans reading X-Men. 
What's their reasoning? Oh, if we're going to let two fictional superpowered mutants get married, what's next? <laughs> Children thinking love is real? <laughs> Some house in the suburbs, like a dead-eyed housewife, comes up the stairs, sees her son drawing hearts in a composition notebook. She's like, what is this? Hope and optimism for a more idealistic future? Who taught you this? <laughs> Learned it from North Star. Nerds. <laughs> I, I, I was getting a beer with my baby brother recently. He's not a baby anymore. He's an adult. And I don't get beer with babies, guys. And... It, <laughs> The bartender was, like, trying to be his best friend or get a tip, and he was like, and what would your lovely girlfriend like? And my brother goes, probably for me to spend less time getting drunk with this nerd. <laughs> we got home, and he told that story to my dad, and my dad uh, goes, you know, you could do a lot worse than your sister. <laughs> Does not make me feel like a princess. <laughs> and no, he couldn't, right? Like, you can't do any worse than having sex with your sister. Unless you're, like, having sex with someone who opens, who, whose opening p pickup line is, Hi, I have dominant genes for webbed toes. <laughs> they call me Bethany. Let's go back to your place and throw away birth control. I, I'm very, um, I don't know if you guys have had this problem, but recently I was forced to seal my boss's coffee mug, urinate in it, take it into a stairwell to take an emergency pregnancy test because I didn't have time to go home before an open mic. <laughs> it was negative, don't worry, you can't get babies from stress. <laughs> but it's not my first pregnancy scare, not bragging. Subsequently... <laughs> I'm very pro-choice, and I'm so pro-choice that I don't understand it when a woman is not, unless she manufactures staircases. <laughs> I did that joke one time, and this woman came up to me, and she was like, but Barbara, what if Jesus were aborted? And I was like, I don't think they had the technology back then, so it sounds really sketchy. <laughs> But I think if the second coming of the Messiah were aborted now, that virgin would have a chance to go to college. <laughs> Marry a nice Jewish doctor. <laughs> Time Magazine's person of the year is the protester, so if you disagree with that, congratulations. <laughs> I've been drinking and smoking a lot recently because lately I have been feeling... You guys are clever. Good job. Uh, I just got back from L.A., and uh, it's weird. I, there's this museum called the Museum of Death, and one of the exhibits there is this Haley's Comet Heaven's Gate cult. Do you guys remember that? Yeah. Uh, so these people, 39 human beings, committed suicide when the comet went by because they thought if you died when the comet was overhead, you could jump up and live in the comet which sounds like a plot device that children's science, fan science fiction fantasy writer Madeline Lange would write well wasted, like blackout drunk. <laughs> like she's like, well, I don't know, there's like a fucking wrinkle in time and then they just go live in the comet. <laughs> and her publisher's like, well, how, Madeline? Like, is there like a tractor beam? F fuck you, how? What are you, a square? Fuck you. <laughs> If you don't be nice to me, I'm going to make my next book have talking dolphins. <laughs> uh, I'm covered in dog hair. You're welcome. And I realize I wear dog hair the same way that some girls my age might wear an engagement ring. Because I'm like, oh, this? Yeah, someone loves me. <laughs> Thanks so much for noticing. <laughs> I know I've been bragging with all my um, pregnancy scares, but I actually haven't had sexual intercourse in like five or six months. You can tell because I call it sexual intercourse. And uh, I'm worried I might forget how to do some stuff. Like I'm not going to forget how to have sex because we're evolutionarily programmed to know how to lie there. <laughs> but I am worried I might forget how to do other stuff. So I've been practicing kissing at home alone on my hand. 
which goes something like this. <laughs> and then my hand goes, eh? um, no hand, we're just kissing. Please don't pressure me. I'm not ready for that yet. Go back to making out. And then my hand goes, eh? hand, if you're going to be such a dick about it, I'm going to unpause the movie Hitch. The first time I ever smoked weed, I was a sophomore in college, because what about this doesn't say late bloomer? <laughs> and my RA in the dorms caught me, and she was like, Barbara, no, if you smoke weed, you're going to get stupider. <laughs> and I said, stupider is not a word. <laughs> and if it were, I think you would, would have meant become stupider. And she was like, here, take my weed. <laughs> Mitt Romney called President Obama an anti-American pot-smoking Hawaiian. Or in other words, fun. <laughs> Thank you, guys. My hat, my hat, my hat. They're dancing around my hat. <laughs> my hat, my hat, my hat. Well, what do you think of that? If it looks like a Mexican hat dance and it sounds like a Mexican hat dance, it's most likely a Mexican hat dance. So take off your hat and let's dance. Yay! Oh my god. Thank we you. why don't we just call that as the end of the show?